Hello there ladies and gentlemen, this is Boisterous coming to you with some Masters League Magnificence out of the map Metropolis LE. Spawning down here in the southern position, we have Joey the Red Protoss. And up here in the northern position, we have his opponents, Susulamons. Susulamons? Yeah, Susulamons makes sense. And he is going to be the Blue Terran. Um, now, as you guys may know this map, it is, of course, the ugliest map that used to be in the ladder pool. And if you don't get that, go watch my co-cast with Kedoink that I put up on Monday. Which is yesterday, because I'm pre-recording this video. But, it'll be two days ago, for when I release it. So, yeah. Just ignore that. Don't peep behind the veil anymore. It was put up two days ago. Definitely. And I know that a lot of you people might be like, wait a second, two, two, uh, two videos? on retired maps in a row? What is this? And the main reason I'm doing that is because Metropolis is a map that I can foresee being in tournament play for a long time, so I don't really care if Blizzard retires it from the ladder pool. It might not be super effective for all of you, but I bet Blizzard's going to put it back into the ladder pool in some way, shape, or form. It's probably just going to be an ugly deserty map, though. That That's what I'm calling. Um, because for some reason it caused lag, and I still don't understand that. It might be this awesome word scroll of attention. Service Bay 5B is closed for repairs due to recent meteor showers. Is that it? Um, it also says Night of the Zerg 4. Brokeback Mining Station? What? Tonight's movie is Brokeback Mining Station followed by... I don't... <laughs> This is unbelievably amazing. How do you design it? Who made this? I don't know, but that board is so great. It actually made me stop commentating the game. Of course, not a whole lot is going on in the game currently. We just have our turn player going for his barracks. And a Protoss player going for his second. Now he's core and a turn player getting his old command along with a reasonably fast gas extractor. Uh, and that's kind of it. So... I think learning about Night of the Zerg and Brokeback Mining Station is a bit more important for everybody out there. Uh, and it looks like the probe is just sitting underneath the Manx Scats, the Manx Skin the Core Hall statues, and something just made a noise in my background. And I really hope it wasn't my hard drive clogging up. Because if it was, that would be bad for me. That would be really bad for me. So, it would appear that Joey is building his stalker, getting the Zealot out in time, and the Pylon is of course coming up in his base of factory coming up from Sasulamon in kind of a stealthy position. He doesn't, he doesn't want it to be scouted easily. Uh, of course, he might also just be building it there so that he can lift it up and land it here. But I'm, I'm guessing it's slightly super stealthy. So if a probe comes in here and hooks right around to go into the gap, to go into like the mineral lane, and where all of the other, uh, where basically all the buildings should be for Sasulamons, he will easily be killed by the marines before he can manage to come down here and actually see the factory. And Starport, oh my god, this is going to be a 1-1-1? One, one, one? It's going to be, I think it's going to be a 1-1-1 one, 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 everybody. I guess it's technically a 1-1-1 one, one, one already because he went for one barracks, one factory, followed by one starport. Now, of course, I'm talking about the actual 1-1-1 one, 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 one push. Either that or it's just a Banshee rush. Does he have two gases? All right, it's probably a cloaked Banshee rush. I don't know. I'm not that good at calling Terran strategies. I, that is one thing I have not learned over the last six months is how to call Terran strategies. It is weird. I don't I'm. I'm not good at it. And it looks like it's going to be Banshees, to some extent. Probably probably with the ability to cloak. However, I am not completely certain on that. He is getting pretty close to the cloak ability, to the money required for cloaking. And of course, he doesn't really have anything else to spend it on other than another Banshee after this one wraps off. And yep, personal cloaking is on the way. So we are going to be seeing cloaked Banshees. These Marines are, you know, just kind of platooning up. Um, I wonder which one is Charlie Sheen in this scenario. Let me guess it's that guy. Yeah, he's probably him. This guy's gonna go crazy and kill all the squad mates. It's, that's what's gonna happen. Um, and we have the probe still chilling up the Zelnaga Tower. 
Interestingly enough, both players have the other one's Zelnaga Tower, or the Zelnaga Tower that's closer to the other one's side of the map. And they, neither of them care. I mean, they don't... Uh, wait, 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 wait. I almost missed this Observer getting that scout off. That is a fantastic scout. I mean, it would be even funnier if he was going for, like, a, you know, Raven Seeker missile play, because that would be awesome. Then the, uh, the Protoss would have absolutely no idea how to deal with it. It looks like a Hellion came in and got some scouting information. Uh, he did not actually kill any probes. He hit one, just to clarify that. Oh, uh, no, he didn't kill any workers. Good job defending that, Joey. I uh, don't know why you wasted a force field, though. A force field, I mean, I guess it did get... Oh yeah, and this this banshee is useless. It's gonna cloak and then it's gonna die anyway because there's an observer right there. The second banshee is of course on its way. The sec the observer is poking into the base, getting a full scout on, at, off on exactly what is happening. Happening. God, I cannot speak today. So Suleiman is going for his second barracks, and that second barracks is going to have a tech lab. So I would expect to see some form of combat shields come out of this. I guess he might go for concussive shells, but I would doubt he would go for stim pack this early on. Because usually you do want to get combat shields before you get stim pack, it just, it works better. Unless, of, uh, yeah, uh, oh, called it. Uh. Man, this guy. I'm so good at this sometimes. It would appear that Suleiman is going for a very defensive play. He is definitely afraid of a bust coming out, and of course, I would be too. I mean, he went for a pretty uh, risque strategy. It was definitely a strategy that not a lot of people do because it's not that good unless you get unless you do damage with it, and he didn't do any damage with it. So, yeah, that's kind of bad. God, but God, that was such an amazing scouting job by Joey. He got that observer in there right in time. Saw the uh, saw the tech lab spinning up. Saw the cloaking coming out. I think he might have even seen the first banshee coming across the map, and he got right home to protect the home world against the Terran invasion. It would appear that the refineries are coming out for Suleiman at his natural, so he is going to be going for plenty or plenty of gas. And I'm guessing that Joey's going to be doing the exact same thing. Cloak Banshee is swinging in. Will it be able to kill anything? That is the question. Why is it flying so close to... What the hell? Sasulamons. Sasulamons. God, what was that? The Nexus has just finished up for Joey. So his natural is a bit behind his opponents. Which isn't the best. It's not the best situation that you want to be in at this point in the game, but at the same time, it's not the worst. I mean, with, uh, with Chrono Boost and the ability to Maynard, maybe some of these probes that are definitely oversaturating your main base down, which you should definitely do right now, Joey. Right now. So many probes. They just don't know where to mine. They're just trying to do it. And it would appear that a couple of mortals are popping out. Some stalkers are still here. And Colossi are on the way. So we are going to have Extended Thermal Lance Colossi, which is of course the logical step after getting a fast robotics facility up in a TBP, or PBT, whichever way you really want to say it. And Suleiman's getting his tanks up in the nice positions. And, you know, this is a really good position for a tank because it's hard to snipe it from, you know, down here. If it was up right here, then literally stalkers would just walk up, shoot it once, and die. <laughs> I still love this news feed. Uber Bowl CLX, Cody, Chicago Kodiak 73, Centauri, I don't know, it was Stardusters, and they had 12. The Kodiaks absolutely destroyed the Stardusters. Man, that game was ridiculous. I mean, when that guy passed that ball to the other guy, and maybe they play with a disc, I don't know. I'm not sure, I'm not quite exactly sure what sports Uber Bowl is in. I, it might be football? But at the same time, it might be some sort of futuristic disc ball, and maybe they're actually playing the sport from Tron in the future. Whether, you know, the light bike sport. Yeah. So maybe the Kodiaks just destroyed the Stardusters at light bike. Maybe that was kill count. That would be awesome. 73 people died to bring you this entertainment and their win. And it would appear that the... Stalkers and Zealots and Colossi. This army is pretty, it's a pretty formidable 
Colossus Army. Not, not the scariest Protoss Army, I guess, because it's only 100 supply. It's, it's about half as scary as it could potentially be. However, with double upgrades coming along, along with Charge and the Templar Archives, it's building up the, it's ramping up to be one of the scarier Protoss armies in the game. Because I'm guessing he's going to go for the Templar Archives, get that nice full Colossus Ball, and then just start adding in High Templars, because High Templars do a crap ton of damage. I, like, the Colossus are really just a distraction for the High Templars. Because if you land a good storm and your opponent does a micro out of it, literally it will kill every marine in his army. It is no joke. Um, if any of you played StarCraft Master, that one where you have the Templar on the other side of a choke point, and there's like 40 marines running at him, and you just storm the choke point and all the marines die, that's what this situation is going to turn into if there is enough micro. And god, that is such a ridiculous scenario. It would look like Sisulamon is moving on to mount his banshees, of course. Moving first, taking out the Stalkers, defending the Zelnaga Tower. Now, even though he took out the Stalker, there was still an Observer with the main army, so he does have full vision and he knows exactly the count of his opponent's units. Um, you know, it was it was like when the 10,000 Orcs were attacking Gondor, and Aragorn managed to warn them in, warn them in time. That's right, I'm dropping movie references all over the place. This observer is definitely Aragorn. Aragorn. I'm bad at pronouncing stuff. Just so you guys know. I have really watched Lord of the Rings. In fact, I've read Lord of the Rings. And, uh, yeah, it is a GSL map. And I'm just bad at pronouncing stuff sometimes. And it would appear that Joey is ramping up to maybe take the fight to Sasulamon's? I mean, I don't see why you would. He's not exactly impending every anything. Sasulamon's is kind of just sitting there on your front lawn, just being like, yeah, come out of your house. I dare you. And of course, when that happens, you don't go out of your house. I wish I had a movie reference to back this up, but I'm pretty sure somewhere in a movie, there's been this time where a guy's like, oh, if I go out that door, I'm gonna die. And a hail of bullets, and then he goes out the side door and just snipes everybody. I'm pretty sure that's actually just every action movie ever. So we are going to have the Banshees trying to break in through the side door, but uh, the shotgun was armed and ready for Joey. And those Stalkers do manage to take out one of them. However, the second one doing a little bit more damage, mainly because there's no ranged stuff with this army. So they are going to try and snipe off an immortal, but they are going to be forced back. There might go for the third, maybe? No, they're, they're just gonna run past the main army again. And, oh, the Observer out of position, letting them live. Oh, God, one of the Banshees runs away. Now, this is like the movie Stella. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm done. I'm not gonna keep movie, making movie references. Now, of course, this is like the epic fail moment of this game, where you walk through tanks, unseaged into the Protoss army, and you just watch them get decimated, because that's kind of what happens when you don't siege your tanks before engaging with a Protoss army. It's just not a wise decision. Of course, the Sulemans is going to fall back into a contingency position. His siege tank is, however, going to die, so he is definitely going to be forced back to his base. He does not want to keep engaging with this army, especially considering the fact that Psystorm is done. So I would expect to be seeing Templars start coming out at any point, and there are the first four Templars from Joey. And Psystorms, four Psystorms, and if you can get up to eight, are... I, I cannot even explain why people don't make this unit more often. I mean, you're seeing it more and more now, but even in the but in the past, when people were really just making Colossi Balls, it didn't make any sense to me. It's like, you have this thing called a High Templar. It does... 80 damage over 4, that's 20 DPS. What's the DPS of a Colossus? It's like 10. So, High Templar, their spells double the DPS of Colossus. Now, of course, uh, I guess that's not really counting in Colossus Splash, but you're also not counting in High Templar Splash. So, still, I think High Templars have been, over, have been underused in the entirety of StarCraft, of StarCraft 2 gameplay. Because they really, they were like the, the mad sexiest units in Brood War. And they're, they're the mad sexiest units now, they're ridiculous. So, I, I want to see them used more. Uh, and it would appear that Sulemans, Sulemans, is not yet taken, he hasn't taken his third yet? The hell, Sulemans? What you doing, fool? Get your 
kick your hood. Uh, he does have a giant army though, and no medevacs to back up that giant army, so that makes his army slightly less giant and impending. He does have a lot of Vikings, but when your opponent only has three Colossus, I, Vikings, they matter? They just don't matter as much. And that is actually going to be moving up to four Colossi soon, but I still claim that mm, Vikings... I, once you get up to four Colossus, Vikings start getting a bit more important, however, still... I'd prefer to see more medevacs. Because honestly, it doesn't matter how quickly you kill the uh, Colossi, if your stim is killing your units faster than you can kill them. That's just a major issue. And the Vikings are going to swing out. They looked like they were trying to get into an impending position. And they most certainly, and the Stalkers just took it right back to him. The Charge Zealots are running into him. Oh my god, beautiful storm. And no micro from Sasulamon. The storms are just ravaging through this army. I mean, look at these freaking Vikings that got stormed. They're all dead too. And the Uber Bowl is still being advertised. God, that's so like five minutes ago. But Sasulamon's just got decimated in that engagement. Ugh. Joey's up by quite a bit of supply here, and Sasulamon leaves the game without a GG. So, uh, good job, Joey. Congratulations. I'm glad that my computer didn't run out of memory in that game. Of course, if you guys want any other boisterous, any other boisterous action, you can head over to youtube.com slash user slash boisterous 2 or you can YouTube search boisterous 2 or I think you can even Google search boisterous 2 You can do any of the above. Just type boisterous 2 into some bar on your window, and eventually you'll find my channel. Also, if you want your games commentated, you can email them on into me, boisterous at boisterous 2s at gmail.com, because, you know... That's kind of how I run this channel. I take games from you, and I, I, I just commentate them for you. I, I put my words to your beautiful plays. So anyway, guys, this is Boisterous, and I'm signing out.